Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager at Whole Latte Love, and today I'm going to show you how to remove the housing from your Bezerra BZ13. We've got two of them here. We have the two different models of them, and I, we're going to do it on the left here, but I do I just want to point out, I do like the wood, and it comes with a bottomless port of filter That's that's real nice. Yeah, it's real classy yeah. looking. I like it too. But All right, let's get to it. All right, so uh, I'm going to start right up at the front here. Uh, this is not necessarily involved for taking the housing off, but I want to show you how to get as much access as you can. All right. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is make sure that we are unplugged, which we are. It's back here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Get you all rolled up. Uh, I always like to try and take as many of the accessories off as I can, just so we got everything clear and out of the way. Two tubes out of the reservoir. All right. Now, starting up here, I like just go in there with something that's just sitting in there. Okay. Uh, but getting grip under there is kind of difficult, so okay. I just use my pick to get in there. Underneath that tray, we have another tray, just two Phillips head screws in here. And pretty much everything we do here is going to be with Phillips head screws, so. It's nice because who doesn't have a Phillips head screw? Yeah. You don't have to have a whole crazy set of metric stuff to get in here. So thank you, Zara. <laughs> All right. And now you have access to your valves, the top of your group head, and your roof switch. Okay. Okay. Now, next thing we could take off the top here, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be done right now, but just so we don't forget, take the screws off here. And depending on what you're doing inside the machine, you may not even need to take these off at all. Uh, easier to show than explain. But basically what's underneath here goes all the way down, water falls along the back and turns into what is your uh, reservoir holder. Okay. So easy. you got just kind of flopping around in there. Mm -hmm. Again, not necessary to take that off, but start with it. Now, we we'll move to the bottom of the machine. We have a total of four screws to remove. We got one in the front on each side. And that one. And I like to do the front two first because okay. once you get all the screws off of here, it's going to start dropping down. I'd rather have it drop down from the back than awkwardly on one side. But that's a personal preference thing, so. Mm -hmm. You could take it off other ways if you want. This is just what works for me. All right. And keep in mind, I do have it overhanging a little bit, like, just yeah. so that I can go straight up in there. Uh, if you do this. Be careful. Be careful, don't drop it on yourself. Bad way to start your day. I'm having flashbacks. I feel like I've said this before. <laughs> now you could you could do this. You could put a towel down and turn it on its side or back, right? If yep. You, wanted to. you could. You could put it forward on its face or something like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now it's loose. The only thing that's still holding this on is there's right up at the front here. You're not really going to be able to see it real well right now, so I'll just show mm -hmm. you. Push down and it'll just pop right out. Sometimes it'll hang up a little bit on one side like this one and I know where I'm going but again you can't really see because this is in the way so I'll sure. show you in just a second here yeah all right now that I have it off just kind of open it up don't drop it on you. Yeah. there we go all right so as you can see we've got these, these little hangers right here and they go right into these keyholes okay so that was pushing down on it, drops down to the larger spot, mm -hmm. and then you just gotta line it up to pop it right out. Okay. So, for the most part, usually it'll just pop right out, but if it hangs up a little bit, that's all that's it is. You just gotta kinda wiggle it around a little bit till it comes completely free. Okay. Okay. Now, like I said, for most of the time, this'll get you pretty much the access you need. You can swing this open a little bit. I don't recommend going too far on it, you don't want to bend it out of shape or anything like mm -hmm. that, but you can reach most of the stuff you got to work on here. If you wanted to take or needed to take it off more to uh, get better access to the top of your boiler or something like that, then you've got 
two screws right here. It's uh, two and a half millimeters. So like I said, for the most part, part the Phillips, Phillips head. head, but if you need to go the rest of the way, that's these guys right here. And once you have those off, you can swing things a little bit more out of the way. You may need to disconnect the wires right here a little bit, mm -hmm. or you can keep things kind of connected and just have a little bit more access like that. But just keep in mind that if you do need to take this completely off to get really, really good access, you do have wiring clipped on on the back here and here, mm -hmm. your tubing here. So you have a lot to kind of take off and make sure you put back correctly when you're done. So I usually try to just kind of swing it just out of the way. One less thing to have to worry about when you're putting everything back together. Sure. Okay. Um, something that I will mention, because we get asked this fairly frequently, <clears throat> um, on the bottom of these machines, I don't know if I got it left here, yep. Yeah. You will see that there is a warranty seal on there. Mm -hmm. uh, if your machine is still in warranty period, it is not typically recommended to break that seal. However, if you're working with us, you bought the machine from us, I'm assuming, uh, <laughs> you're working with us to try and solve an issue with the machine, if we guide you through breaking that seal, then we have that on record and it will not affect your warranty. So Everything if we tell you to break be... that seal, you're safe. All right. So. Um, the only other thing I'll point out on the bottom of the machine here is uh, this nice giant access, access right here. Uh -huh. It's another section, two and a half millimeter screws. And that gets you really, really good access to the bottom of the boiler. Not much beyond that, uh, yeah. but that's a really nice way to get to that without having to pull the whole boiler out because as you can tell, it's pretty low there. So, so you can get to your heating element there? Yep, your heating mm -hmm. element and your uh, uh, high limit switch is down there as well. So okay. if you all ever right. need to work on those, you don't need to do all this. You just need to remove the four screws at the bottom there. And that's about all there is to getting deep inside this. Okay, time to put the housing back on, and it's basically the exact opposite as what we just did. Uh, only tricky thing is just getting those keyholes lined up again. Not horribly tricky though. I uh, also suggest when you're sliding this on, keep an eye on any of your silicone tubes. Make sure you're not pinching anything between the reservoir insert and the housing there. So if you just get it lined up, to the front, I just look here, make sure that this edge is up to this edge mm -hmm. on both sides, and then lift up, plop it into keyholes, and then lift up a little bit. Okay. Now, just Gotta lift up on the back here. Support the back end so it doesn't fall down. Yep. Mm -hmm. and as long as I'm holding that back end, it usually keeps it pretty straight there. So, again, with this is where we're very careful. Let's look up. The rivets are silver, not black, so they're not hiding on you. Okay. Always helpful. Sometimes, depending on where you're working on this and how your lighting is, it'd be nice if they had little, like, uh, landing strip lights blinking <laughs> at you or something, but... Oh. Whoops! Yeah. Talking about landing strip lights, huh? <laughs> You get like those uh, piano floors where you step on them, they light up. Oh, yeah. I think I need one of those in front of my bench for when I drop screws. <laughs> All right, snug it up. And as I say with most housing reinstalls, I always keep it just a little bit loose at first, just in case Make sure anything needs to be adjusted a little bit. Lined up. This machine is usually pretty good, the uh, way everything lines up with the uh, holes that are actually on the housing. There isn't a whole lot of room for like wiggling around, so mm -hmm. your tolerance is tight and everything fits just right. So another, another prop to you, Bezerra. Push in a little bit there. 
go, a little snug. And then I just check to make sure that I am flush on the fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a little unflush, usually you just need to kind of give it a push from the back there, but we are exactly where we need to be on here. So I just go back through and tighten everything up the rest of the way. And then we got the top. I'm just gonna get this. It is very snug on here. So mm -hmm. if you gotta pop it in, don't be surprised. And the only other thing is just kind of lining everything up. Uh, the lower holes, cause see you got go through here, you gotta go through here, and then your rivet is down here. So do your best to line everything couple, up. Couple levels working there. Yeah, usually what I'll end up having to do is just kind of move from the back there until everything gets lined up just right. Get one in there and start it as a space saver. Keep it from moving around too much on me. So you left that one a little loose over there, right? Yep, that there way I can shimmy this one around if I need to. All right, so there we go. And then this obviously not a water fitting or anything, so you don't need to go crazy on it. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you go down too far, you'll start to divot it. You know, it's already cupped a little bit there just to prevent that, but don't go crazy on it. And the last one here, this one's a lot easier to line up. Nice big sluts. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hmm. Don't do what I did. Did you go upside down? No, I didn't go upside down. Okay. I did the wrong, wrong screw. screw. Yep, the, oh. the flat topped Phillips go on this cup riser. So, I mean, I don't think you really want to watch me redo my mistake here, but keep <laughs> that yeah. in mind. So, eh, that's the hard part there. So oh, okay. you just get that in the right way, that in the right way, everything where it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. Plop this guy back on and you're ready to rock and roll. Just don't All forget right. to put your uh, drip tray back in and make a mess. All right, thanks Brian for taking us through that. Yeah, not a problem.